Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. I'm Sean David, and as always, thanks for tuning in. Steve Kerr is about to become one of the most successful coaches in NBA history. And it still sounds kind of funny to me because to me, Steve Kerr will always be the player of the Chicago Bulls. As time is moving on, of course, more and more people are forgetting about the basketball career of Steve Kerr, which is why I made this video. So in this video, we're going to revisit the career of Steve Kerr and also re-evaluate and see how good he actually was. But before we start this video, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And I would say, let's start the video. Came out on the floor and listened to this ovation. Steve Kerr on the floor. Kerr open to three. He's got it. Let's go for the lane. Couldn't get it. Kelly gets it out. Steve Kerr open three. Yeah. The first thing that might surprise you is Steve Kerr wasn't born in the US. Actually, he was born on the 27th of September in 1965 in Beirut, Lebanon. So pretty far away from the US and even further away from NBA basketball. His father, Malcolm Kerr, was an American academic who was specialized in the Far East. Steve Kerr spent the majority of his childhood in Lebanon or the Far East in general. He attended Cairo America College in Egypt, the American Community School in Beirut, Lebanon, and Palisades High School in Los Angeles when he and his family finally moved back to the US in 1981. When Kerr finished high school, it didn't look like he would get any scholarship from any good colleges. But, well, destiny took over. In many ways, Steve Kerr's story is that of an American hero, of an underdog who beat the odds and warmed people's hearts. Coming out of high school, he didn't have a single scholarship offer. But Lute Olson, in his first year at Arizona, was trying to rebuild a crippled program. So he gave Kerr a chance. We were in dire need of a, of a shooter. And we had uh, taken the job in, in April. And, uh, and so during the summer, in addition to looking at young talent, I was out trying to spot somebody that we thought might be able to come in and help us out that next year. And, and Steve, uh, Steve shot the ball really well when I saw him, and, and also he's the kind of young man that we like to have in our program. I was just going to be a regular college student and uh, applied to different schools, and luckily Coach Olson came in at the last second and offered me a scholarship, and things have worked out. I can succeed in this program, whereas I may not be able to succeed in a program like Las Vegas or Oklahoma where it's a full run-and-gun situation where they, they want to have five great athletes out on the floor. Steve wanted to prove to everyone, but especially his coach, that he deserved to be on the team. In his freshman season, he averaged 7 points, as well as shooting over 50% from beyond the arc. Everything was looking good, until one day, his father was the victim of a devastating attack. Steve's father, Malcolm, who was as passionate about Middle Eastern affairs as his third child was about basketball, had been gunned down in a wave of anti-American sentiment. The patriarch of the family was gone, while Kerr reflected on how his basketball family helped to pull him through. That was obviously a really hard time in my life, but um, to be part of a team when you're going through adversity, to be able to rely on your teammates and your coaches, to be able to come in every day and be part of that family, uh, I mean, that's what it's about. The day after the killing, Steve went to class and then to practice. And then the day after, he suited up for the Wildcats in their game against Arizona State with one main goal in mind. The whole game, I was thinking of my dad, and uh, I, had, I had dedicated the game to him um, privately. He made the first shot he took and was on his way to a successful career that was bittersweet in one big way. That's probably my biggest regret, you know, because he never got to see me play at Arizona and never got to see me play in the NBA. His senior year was capped by a trip to the Final Four but not before an ugly incident that again evoked the pain of losing his father. Playing on the floor of their arch rival Arizona State, Kerr heard the unthinkable coming from the crowd. There were about 10 or 12 uh, students yelling, you know, where's your father? I rarely have a vindictive thought in my mind when I'm playing basketball, but that was probably the, the one game where I did. And uh, I've, I've never seen anything like it. Kerr responded to the heckling the only way he knew how, by channeling his emotion into action. 
He hit six three-pointers in the first half of that game. Arizona won by 28 points. And the prospect of a pro career, once seemingly impossible, was looking like a reality. I was just hoping to play college ball somewhere. And, and I know he would have loved to have seen me play there. There's no way we ever imagined that I, I would be playing in the NBA. At the end, Steve Kerr definitely had a solid college career. But of course, not good enough to be a secure pick at the NBA draft. So let's have a look at his numbers. So first, let's have a look at his first season in 1983-84. He was averaging 7 points in 22 minutes a game. Solid numbers for freshmen. The good part is his shooting percentage, 51% from the field, is more than good. In his second season, he went up to 33 minutes a game, averaging 10 points. His shooting percentage is off the chain. 56% from the field is crazy. And also for the following two seasons, always shooting far above 50%. So he definitely was a great shooter. Also, if you have a look at his free throw percentage, in his first season, he was struggling a little bit but it got better and better year by year, peaking in his third season, almost shooting 90%. So if you were an NBA team that was looking for a good shooter, I think Steve Kerr would have been a great choice. If you need some good spacing or to stretch the floor, and obviously not a high draft pick, but a good role player that doesn't need many touches to score. It came in the second round, the announcement that Steve Kerr had been selected by the Phoenix Suns. Kerr was a favorite son of sorts in Tucson, extremely popular with the fans and extremely effective for the team, especially those famous three-pointers. I'll drill it in from three-point Steve was happy. He finally realized his dream of becoming an NBA player and also was able to play close to home. What else can you want? Well, I guess playing time, because in his first season with the Phoenix Suns, he hardly got any action, only playing 26 games, averaging two points in only six minutes. Garbage time. He was actually so used sitting on the bench that he was afraid to play. Steve, what was that first year like? You're playing for, for Cotton? For that, Cotton Fitzsimmons. Yeah. You know, my experience was totally different than these guys, because I was a you know late second round pick. I didn't know if I was gonna make the league. I was on a non-guaranteed contract. And I'll never forget one of my first exhibition games, we played the Bulls, and I was just trying to make the roster. And Michael Jordan mm -hmm. gets the ball right in front of our bench. And I'm already scared to death, like, God, I hope I don't get into this game. I'm, <laughs> I'm not ready for this stuff. And he holds the ball out. He holds the ball out and he looks right at me. And I'm on the bench, just kind of like, he holds the ball and he goes, watch this. And he turns, he went right around Dan Marley, bam, dunks it looks back at our bench and just starts laughing. And I'm looking like, there's no way in hell I can ever make this. <laughs> now I really don't want to. I thought, I, thought he looked, wow. I thought he looked at you and said, 10 years from now, I'm gonna throw this to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the following season in 1989, he was then traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers, which really helped Steve Kerr. Suddenly he had a set spot on the roster, was in the 10 player rotation, and even played 78 games, averaging 20 minutes and almost 7 points per game. And that season he was also the best 3 point shooter percentage wise, shooting 50% from beyond the arc. The next two and a half seasons he stayed with the Cleveland Cavaliers, losing a few of his minutes but still being in the rotations. In 1992, he then was sent to the Orlando Magic, which almost was the end of his career. He only played 47 games, only 9 minutes a game, averaging 2.6 points per game. He was almost out of the league. So in 1993, after a terrible season with the Orlando Magic, Steve Kerr was finally signed with the Chicago Bulls. They were looking for a spot-up shooter, somebody who could stretch the floor, and Steve Kerr fit that bill perfectly. You gotta remember, that was when Jordan retired, and the Bulls' style of play drastically changed. But even when Jordan had his comeback, Steve Kerr was the perfect match for Chicago Bulls' triangle offense. Phil Jackson and Tex Winters knew exactly how to make use of Steve Kerr's great shooting ability. Not only did Steve Kerr receive heavy minutes, but he was also very important for the Chicago Bulls' style of play. No matter if it was Scottie Pippen or Michael Jordan, once they got into trouble, they could always kick out the ball to Steve Kerr. And believe me, that guy could shoot the ball. He would make that shot. He became one of the best shooters of all time, not only winning the shooting contest at the All-Star Game, but also being the the best three-point shooter percentage-wise in the league. So when Steve Kerr joined the Chicago Bulls, of course he had no clue that this would change his NBA career forever, or that he would take one of the most iconic shots of all time. The Bulls have it with 28 seconds left. 
earlier in the series, Stockton had double teamed him and stolen the ball in a similar situation, and they beat us. So he thought about that and realized Stockton would probably come off of me, and he just wanted me to know that I had to be ready. And I just decided right then, if I get it, I'm just going to let it fly. It is Michael Jordan time. Michael, six seconds, five. Michael in traffic to curl. 15 footers. Yeah. 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 Hitting the big shot in 97 is my most memorable moment. When we called timeout with 25 seconds to go, we, we went into the huddle, and Phil told Michael, he said, Michael, I want you to take the last shot. And Michael said, you know, Phil, I don't feel real comfortable in these situations. So maybe we ought to go in another direction. So I thought to myself, well, I guess I got to bail Michael out again. Steve Kerr won three championships with the Chicago Bulls and stayed with them even after Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman left. In 1998, at the age of 33 years, Steve Kerr joined the San Antonio Spurs. At that time, Steve Kerr had serious back problems and wasn't able to play on the same level as he did with the Chicago Bulls. Still, he was a reliable shooter who was always ready when his name was being called. He won another championship with the San Antonio Spurs before he joined the Portland Trail Blazers in 2001 just to come back to the San Antonio Spurs one year later. He retired after the 2002-2002 three season. So how good was Steve Kerr as a player? If we take a look at his numbers, you can see, okay, they're far away from being impressive. But to me, he fits the perfect description, being the perfect role player. He had one specific job that he led to perfection. He was deadly from beyond the arc and made his opponents think twice if it's a wise idea to double team Michael Jordan or Scottie Pippen, because he would make them pay. Steve Kerr was never a great athlete, but still you could see that he was giving it a 110% on the floor. Also a very important aspect, he was a great locker room guy. You can talk to any of his teammates, he was always a good spirit, never complaining about minutes, always being ready at practice, so what more can you ask from a role player? He also was a very smart basketball player. You can see this in his coaching now. So to conclude, Steve Kerr, the perfect role player. Alright you guys, that's it for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace I'm out. Hey you guys, if you're active on Facebook, I can really recommend Open Court. As an NBA fan, you should find everything you need. If it's funny NBA videos, impressive highlights, or even NBA news, I check out Open Court every day.